Yeah, I was a, uh, a scientist co-pilot on uh, uh, a C-47, and we had 16 paratroopers on board, and that's what we were going to do, drop uh, paratroopers on Normandy. This was the 82nd Airborne. <laughs> it, uh, it was quite a show. So I stopped and I looked back at these guys. It looked like a bunch of college kids, you know, going to some kind of soiree or something. And I, I don't know, it just, it struck me, these guys are going home and they're going to be killing people and being killed. You know? Anyway, I said, I did this, and I said, good luck, fellas. And they said the same to you, Lieutenant. We got further in, and we gave the boys a red light to stand up and hook up. And, <clears throat> and then the, it just, just like the 4th of July, the tracers going up like this all over the place, and the strings are tracers, and, and little explosive bullets and uh, explosive stuff, and, and big explosions, and searchlights. And I found out later that what they were doing with the searchlight was looking for paratroopers to shoot at. So you finally got out of the uh, the area where they were black with heavy and everything, and and we came out. We formed up uh, over. Uh, we came out over Omaha and Utah Beach. Now this was about 1:30 in the morning, and uh, it was uh, way before the anything action any action started, and so. Anyway, we uh, formed up and and headed back to England. And pretty soon in the water down below, we could see shapes and wakes of ships and, and all kinds of everything. And then they just wakes and, and ships that you could see were clear back to England, you know. And there were thousands of ships down there and landing craft. And uh, uh, one of the big battleships, cruisers, and destroyers, and all kinds of, even a floating pier. Of course, I didn't know this at the time, but it certainly looked impressive to me, and I said, God, we're going to win this war. You know? With all this stuff, I was never so proud of my country as I was then. That all that stuff was made right in America, you know? About a week after the after D-Day and everything, where well, they had a big uh, formation, <clears throat> and I'm standing there, and we're all in attention, and J.J. Uh, Roberts was taking Eisenhower down to our right. And of course, I, we didn't know that at the time, and I'm standing there, a little second lieutenant standing at attention, hoping that they're going to quit this stuff so I can go back and sack out, you know. <laughs> the first thing I see is, Eisenhower, standing in front of me, the Supreme Allied Commander. And I said, God almighty, <laughs> He said, Lieutenant, did you take part in the D-Day invasion? I said, yes, sir. He said, let's get those ribbons on. And he walked on. It was, uh, I prized that memory. Uh, it's it just, uh, Something is going to go with me to my grave, I think. But I'm proud that uh, I, I have been a part of it, even though I was a little part, you know, glorified chauffeur. That's my D-Day tale. <laughs>